buckle up, it's showtime! Well, hello, truth seekers and boat rockers. It's Bobby Faulkner with you once again, deep down in the bunker of rightly dividing the word of truth, along with my beautiful wife, Liz, as always, behind the camera. And we bring you the unmitigated excellence of the King James Bible, rightly divided. Now, those of you that are familiar with our site and have come to see our videos over the course of time, or maybe even are brand new, know that we primarily expose many of the frauds and charlatans that are on the Christendom landscape out there that have been misleading people in many cases for decades with wrong doctrine for today, as well as simply outright lies. And we're just gonna kinda go off the cuff today. Normally I have things a little more prepared and, and scripted, if you will, and we do a multitude of various videos of showing people like Kenneth Copeland and Todd White and Benny Hinn and you name the names. We may do a little bit of that towards the end of this video today, but it's gonna be uh, primarily a, a shorter video, again, a truth bite as we call it, because we just wanted to talk about a couple of things here in scripture, hopefully to get these things drilled into our heads. Many of us that have followed religion, denomination, tradition, popular beliefs, things like that over decades and decades, we've been monkey trained, so to speak, to believe these things, to follow these things, not thinking for ourselves. Deception and pride are a couple of Satan's biggest tools. And what does scripture say? That people are led away by their own lust, that we have itching ears, that we heap up for ourselves teachers that tell us what we want to hear. You know, tell us what we want to hear. We don't want to study for ourselves typically. We don't want to, we think we do. We hear people all the time say, well, I read the Bible or I've read the Bible or you just don't know this or you haven't witnessed a, a move of the Holy Spirit or you just don't think God can do these things. Well, we've heard it all and we've done it all. Trust me when I say that. We're not the end all be all here. We're just wanting you to consider, as we always do, what we're saying even today in this, this video. Consider. That's what our Apostle Paul said, in, uh, is to consider the things I say and the Lord give the understanding in these things. So that's what, 2 Timothy 2, seven. That's what we're asking you to do yourselves, even in this video here today. If you come back with something script in scripture that's contrary that you say well this is what you said was this but this is really this is what i see we can talk about it and have an intelligent conversation but we're not going to debate with people this isn't some democratic society here this is what god said versus what we all believe and we all have to be fully persuaded ourselves we have to be persuaded in what god has said whether we believe it or not whether it's truth or not and of course the whole bible is the truth from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. But we've said this many times, and it's not just because we've said it. About 90% of the Bible is written to and about Israel. About 10% is to the church, the body of Christ, or everyone today for that matter. But what have we been taught over the course of time? To follow Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Over and over and over. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John does hold true that those are true scriptures in there. That was truth for Israel. That is not truth for us today, nor anyone today. It's not for the church, the body of Christ, or anyone after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Israel has their program, their earthly kingdom. We are going to heaven. We are going to be caught away, raptured, as it's so famously said uh, to be, and that's what's going to happen. The church, the body of Christ, will be up in heaven. Israel will have their kingdom down here eventually. But currently right now, the God of this world, like it or not, is Satan. He is the prince of this world, the prince of the power of the air. He is the God of this world. He has blinded the eyes of people. And if this gospel be hid, Paul says, it's hidden from those that are lost. So this always brings into question, if somebody is not following Paul's gospel exclusively as the instructions for the church today and where we find our salvation doctrine, that brings into question, are they lost? Is it hid from them? Is that why they don't understand? Or is it simply because of, again, tradition, what we've been taught over and over and over by our favorite preachers or teachers, someone we grew up with in the family, in the neighborhood, in the geographical area that we live, or have we watched things in, in, in YouTube church? 
online and believed what we see on a video like Benny Hinn supposedly healing people, Todd White supposedly making people's legs grow, Kenneth Copeland came in claiming that he got a word from the Lord in the middle of the night. And like we've said this before as well, why is it that God is only doing these things for them? People want to say, well, they're the anointed ones. They're the chosen ones. No, they're the lying ones is what they are. No one today is anointed with these things. No one is specially chosen today with these things. We are all called. Another thing people like to say, I'm called to do this. I'm called to do that. Or I want to know what the Lord wants me to do. Well, all you have to do is simply go to scripture and recognize in 2 Corinthians 5 verses 18 through 20, which we're going to talk about that a little bit here in this short video we are called to be ambassadors and ministers of reconciliation. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. That's what our apostle Paul says. Our apostle Paul says the things he has written, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37, are the commandments of the Lord. If anyone, anyone thinks that he's spiritual or a prophet, know that the things that he has written are the commandments of the Lord. And we have to be preached this gospel. We are not so wonderful and amazing, no matter what people like Todd White say, oh, you're so amazing, and God just loves you, and he wants you to be the best animator you can be. He wants you to be the best sound engineer you can be. You're going to be a protector of women, and all these other fantastical things he tells people. He just pulls stuff out of the sky, and we use him as a big example because he's become increasingly popular. And who did he learn from? Liars extraordinaire, Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn, just as examples. So all these birds of a feather, they stick together with these things. But we want to kind of hone in on what they're not telling you. And rather than telling people that they're so amazing and they're so wonderful, we are all found guilty, according to Scripture. We are all born into sin. We're born unto Adam. So how's it we're so amazing? Why did God have to send Jesus Christ to the cross, which he is God, of course, as well, why did he have to go to that cross and pay for our sins that were so wonderful and amazing? People just don't consider these things. They want to just hear what they want to hear. We are supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that is long out the door for many, most today it seems, because they want to see something or they think they've seen something. I saw gold teeth. I saw oil on someone's hands or feet. I saw flakes coming out of the, the air vent and they claim it's the Holy Spirit. All sorts of things. We've seen it. We've done it. I was in that stuff and that word of faith nonsense, charismatic nonsense for years, folks, years. I rubbed elbows with many of these big name so-called preachers and teachers. And do I regret it? In some ways, yes. But now looking back, I can use those things that I now know were blatantly lies and wrong to hopefully encourage other people and lead them down a path to rightly divide the word of truth. My wife, the same way. We're in this together. We're a team on this together. We rightly divide the word of truth. And we had to come to that knowledge of the truth that we're still ever growing and learning. But we are coming to the knowledge of the truth where, as scripture says, there's many that are, that are doing that very thing and they're not coming into the knowledge of the truth. So it's important that we understand scripture rightly divided. You cannot just pluck things out of scripture and claim it's for you. We hear people say the, those things all the time. Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And why aren't you? You know, or, or they'll say, oh, all we have to do is, is, is pray and, and these things will follow those that believe. Well, how's that working out for you? Are you praying things and, and, they're, and they're, everything that you're praying is following you? All these signs and wonders? No. And Satan can do stuff, folks. Satan can perform counterfeit or fake false signs and wonders. But our imaginations, our vain imaginations can create all sorts of things. Like Jesus coming to you in a dream, coming to your bedside, an angel appearing before you. We will manufacture things all the time. We talk to ourselves all the time. We do all day long, and that's not like you have some split personality. It's called a soliloquy. We talk to ourselves all, hey, I think I'm gonna later, I'm gonna go here. You know, for dinner, I think I'm gonna have this. Wow, that was really a good movie. We do this all day long. So why would it be so unusual for somebody in religion, in speaking about the Bible, think like, that's God talking to me now because it's something good, because it's something that you wanna hear. I want to be healed. I want to be wealthy. I want to be all these wonderful things. So now that becomes God talking to you because you want those things. That is your own lust. Okay, so think about that. That is your own lust. 
And so in this video, again, it's off the cuff here today. There's nothing scripted, so to speak. I'm just talking, obviously, that sh well, it should be obvious by now. But let's, let's look at a couple things in Scripture here because we really hope that not only will you consider these things, you'll see them for what they are. We have to read the Bible in context, let it say what it says and mean what it means. So we're going to go to Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, and I'll, I'm going to need to put my, my uh, readers on here so I can see what I'm looking at, and I'm going to be looking down a little bit, so... You know, normally I don't do that. I'm looking right at the camera and speaking and, and, and doing that. But I'm going to look at the scripture so I make sure I get the words correct because the words mean something. So when we look at Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to put this up on the screen for you here. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. That's verse 13, Colossians 2, 13 having forgiven you, A-L-L, -L, all trespasses, forgiven you, past tense. Blotting out, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Read those words over and over until you get it drilled into your head. Because we have been taught through religion, we have to beg for forgiveness ask for forgiveness, and repent of sins. And yes, should we repent of sins? Absolutely. Change our mind on sins? That's what repenting is, changing your mind. But it is not a prerequisite. It is not a condition of getting salvation or a condition of maintaining salvation, regardless of what some of these big name people want to say. I used to beg God, crying daily, asking God, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me when I didn't realize he already had crying and begging. I just want to get to heaven, Lord. How do you stand me? I'm so worthless. I'm so, you know, I just, I hate myself and, and doing these things. But yet, when you find out, when you get this in your head that he already has forgiven you, that's why our, our new website, by the way, and not trying to put in a pitch here like some of these guys do for their books, but our, our website, alreadyforgiven.com, that's why we say those things, because we are already forgiven. Forgiveness has been accomplished. So let's look at this again now. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath, it says hath, but I'll say has, he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. He didn't forget any. So these ones that say, well, you better repent of your sins and hopefully you don't forget any. You don't have to worry about forgetting any. It says he's already forgiven all all trespasses. He's forgiven them. He did it. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So the job is done. The work is done. He shed the blood. He paid the penalty. There's nothing you can do, should do, in order to make that any better or any different. It's not going to matter what you think or what one of these, these named people tries to tell you that you should do, what hoop you need to jump through, that you need to beg for mercy and crawl through glass and, and, and all that. We've heard John MacArthur say that as an example. You gotta beg for mercy and, 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 and repent of your sins. Billy Graham and Franklin Graham, they say that, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. Well, sure, we wanna repent of our sins. That should be a given when you realize what Jesus Christ has done for you, but again, it is not a requirement in order for sins to be forgiven because it's already been done. Now let's take a look at another scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, and we, we mentioned there earlier, 18 through 20, but let's look at verse 19 here in particular. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. We're gonna put this on the screen here. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. If you could read something else into that other than what it says, then you are trying to do that. You are trying to spiritualize it, or because of being taught wrong doctrine and, and believing lies of, of these false preachers, these charlatans, these, these fakers out there, you've bought into what they've convinced you of. And speaking of which, folks, we're not coming on here anytime for that matter, not today or anytime, 
thinking that we're just going to convince them of something because anything we can convince you of, anything we can persuade you of, somebody else can come along and change it. They can say, ah, oh, no, that's not what that means. Well, we're taking this right out of scripture. And if you read it the way it says it, then you, you have a choice to make. You can make the wrong choice. We did for a long time, but let's read this again and see what it says. Verse 19, 2 Corinthians 5, 19, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling who? The world, reconciling the world. He didn't say save people. He didn't say only people that believe. He didn't say any particular special people groups. He said he was reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses. Most people would know, but in case you don't, not imputing means he's not holding them against anyone. So he reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. That is plain, simple English in our case here. You cannot see that any other way unless you just refuse to see it for what it is and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And that's where we get the fact that we are ministers of reconciliation. We are to help people to do this. Now let's, let's read through 18 through 21 here kind of quickly. And all things, verse 18, are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. There it is. To wit, what we just read, verse 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors. We're here in his stead for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. So Paul's beseeching them saying, this is what God's calling you. People say, I want to know what God's calling me to do, or this is my calling for, from God. God's called me to do this. God has called me to go to Africa. God's called, no, what God has called you to do is be an ambassador and a minister of reconciliation once you are saved. That's what he's called you, us, all of us to do. When we are saved, we are to be ministers of reconciliation. And why? Verse 21, for he has made us, or excuse me, he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And, and uh, so, uh, and I didn't finish in verse 20 there. In verse 20, we're ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us and we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So that's what we're trying to do is to find people that will listen, that will pay attention, that are willing to take a look and study 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly divided and be reconciled to God. What does that mean? God reconciled the world and to himself, we just read that, he's no longer imputing trespasses to anyone, so we are to be reconciled to that fact. And what is the gospel of our salvation? As we know, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, this is the gospel of our salvation. Paul says, the gospel wherein ye are saved, that Jesus died according to scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel of our salvation. Then when you move to Ephesians chapter one, verses 12 through 14, to, to broaden it out a little bit, we trust in that. We trust in Christ. When we hear this gospel of our salvation, it has to be preached. That's why Romans chapter one, verse 16 says, the preaching of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. The preaching of Jesus Christ not the falling out on the floor, not the legs growing out, not tumors supposedly falling out in fields, not somebody getting special words in their sleep or their dreams or anything else, or these visions. There's a multitude of people on, on, on YouTube alone right now that think they're getting all these things. That's not what the deal is. It's the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25, that was given to Paul exclusively. Paul is our 1 Timothy 1.16 pattern. Him first, him first was mercy shown. The first saved man in this dispensation, Paul is the first saved man and he's our pattern for which all that believe are to follow. This is not hard. This is not rocket science as the saying goes. This is simply believing what God stated through our apostle Paul. There will be no further instructions there will be no further revelation. There will be nothing else in this dispensation of grace. Look that up. People want to say dispensation. There's no such. 
Look at Ephesians chapter three, verse two. It's a dispensation of the grace of God. Paul says it was given to him for us. It was given to him for us. It didn't say Peter, James, and John. He doesn't say anything about preaching it. You will not find anywhere in Paul's epistles that you have to ask or beg for forgiveness. You will not find anywhere in Paul's epistles that you are to tithe 10% or any other percent for that matter and do any of those things. You will not find, it is not the same preaching. It is different. It was kept secret, Paul says in Romans 16, 25. It was kept secret since the world began. What Peter spoke of at Pentecost it was spoken out of the mouth of the prophets since the world began. Again, this is not hard. We're not trying to be insulting to anyone. We didn't get that either at one time. We didn't see that for what it is. This is why we're trying to drive these points home, folks. So recognize all of your sins are already forgiven. Does that mean you get a free ticket? A lot of these guys want to say it's easy believism, like John MacArthur or some others, or that just gives you a green light to do whatever you want to. No, it doesn't. God hates sin. That's why he died on our behalf because we were yet sinners. He, all are found guilty. We're all guilty. We're not amazing, Todd. Sorry. We're not amazing and wonderful. And God would have just, he bankrupted heaven for us. He would, how many times have you heard, if you've been around for a while, heard he would have came just for you. Where do you get that from? Where's chapter and verse for that? There is none. He didn't come just for you. He came and reconciled the world and to himself, he says, not imputing our trespasses anymore. That's why he went to that cross. That's why he died, was buried, and rose on the third day for forgiveness of sins. That is the gospel of our salvation. You are not going to find our gospel of salvation anywhere in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or anywhere else in Israel's instructions, Israel's program, in that kingdom program. The kingdom on earth is Israel. That's going to be them down the road and we are going to be caught away, as it says in, in Thessalonians chapter 4, that we are going to be caught away in heaven to be forever with the Lord. That's good news. That's great news. When you get that into yourself, get that ingrained into you, and realize your sins are forgiven, that you don't have to beg for mercy anymore. Should we go out and sin? No, and, but we are. Unfortunately, we're going to sin, folks. We're going to do it. We, you know, the ones that say, oh, if you sin, you don't belong to the Lord or, or, or that's not scripture to us, by the way, where that says that you're, you know, you're, you're none of his. If you, if, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, according to Paul's gospel, you're none of his. And what does Paul say? To shun profane and vain babblings. We are to shun profane and vain babblings, folks, empty stuff, stuff that's meaningless or stuff that doesn't belong to us. He even calls it doctrines of devils. Why? Not because it's not truth. It's not truth for us. This is what Satan would want us to believe, that we belong in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How many of you out there right now are believing that? We did. We raise our hands first, folks. We point the finger at us first. We did it. We believed it. So we're not holier than thou. We don't think we're smarter than you or anybody out there. We just have chosen to believe the Bible for what it says and, and read it. Those words mean something. So please, if you get anything out of what we said here today, understand, go back and look at those scriptures again. Colossians chapter 2, 13 and 14, that your sins have been nailed to the cross. He took these things out of the way. He's forgiven us all trespasses, all of them. There's none. He didn't forget anything. He didn't miss anything. And that we are ministers of reconciliation. He's no longer holding them against us. Please do not misunderstand that for it's okay to go out and do whatever you want because you will pay a price in the world if you get caught doing something silly or stupid or sinful. But here's the good news is that even if we go out and, and, and we're gonna sin, we're still forgiven. If we have put our trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins, it's done. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. That's what it said in Ephesians 1, 12 through 14. We're sealed. It's done. You can't unseal it. You can't undo it. That is the, the deal for us. We have no promises of the fathers. We have nothing to do with Israel's covenants. None of that. Please get this. Our sins are forgiven. It's done. Trust and believe in that by that finished cross work. And then, folks, you are saved. Now, 
We're just going to throw in maybe a clip or two because we can't help it. We have to show these guys. I think there's something recent here I'm going to throw up here uh, of uh, Todd White and something of Kenneth Copeland. I think it was revolved around the coronavirus. Uh, Todd just being Todd. When, when a mighty, mighty strong, strong south wind, south wind heat, heat burn this thing. Burn this thing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Satan, Jesus. you bow your knee. Satan, you bow your knee. You fall on your face. You, you fall, fall on your face. COVID-19. COVID-19. I blow, I blow the wind of God. The wind of God. On you. On you. You are destroyed forever. You are, you are destroyed, destroyed forever. forever. And you will never be back. And you will never, never be back. back. Thank you, our God. Thank, Thank you, our, our God. God. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it Cause it to happen. But can I show you something? Please. That will really blow you away. Do you see your right leg? It's shorter than your left leg. Yes, you are right. Okay. <laughs> Remember when I asked you about your foot? Now watch, I'm gonna pray, and Jesus is gonna grow your leg out and heal your back, okay? Watch, watch, and you're gonna feel heat go the whole way through your body, watch. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Right leg, I command you grow in Jesus' name. Do you feel that? Look. <laughs> and so today, you had an encounter with the living God. So this is real. Jesus is real, and he loves you, and he wants a relationship with you. Have you ever asked Jesus to come and live inside of your heart? Thank you. Never. Pray with me. Come on. Just say this with me. Lord God. Right now, I freely give my life to Jesus, and I'm asking you to forgive me for my sin and come and make your home inside of me, in Jesus' name. You can feel that. <laughs> That's a it's amazing, man. Please stop following these guys. Stop listening to this nonsense. Get your head in scripture rightly divided, 2 Timothy 2.15. We appreciate you stopping by here to listen to us today and watch everything. Those of you that are maybe listening by radio, there's not going to be more than a clip or two we're going to throw in, so you won't miss much. But still, go to our YouTube at B-O-B-B-Y-F-A-U-L. K-N-E-R forward slash YouTube. If you'd like to write us, it's Bobby Faulkner at alreadyforgiven.com. We'd love to hear from you. We don't mind having intelligent conversations. And if you're not sure on some of these things, we'd like to direct you to scripture. It's not our opinions that matter here. We can only share our experiences as we see in comments from other believers that have done the same. And hopefully you look at some of those comments and see you're not alone. You're not alone out there. And so Follow these things. Look at these things. Thanks again for stopping by. We appreciate you taking your Bible time, and we'll see you next time. Well, bye. Happy trails to you until we meet again.